we will look into the detection of um, open circuit faults. After having um, watched this presentation, you will be able to explain the behavior of an open circuit fault and also how uh, to detect it. Uh, we will consider uh, X1 as a specific example. X1, um, you may recall from a previous presentation, is an open fault that is located inside the first non-boundary scan cluster. Uh, again, the question that we have to consider is what are the fault detection conditions for this fault? Well, since we assume that uh, a floating input will always capture a 1, then we have to make sure that we drive a 0 from this output. So if we can uh, propagate a 0 to this pin, then we should expect a 1 to be captured at input to a 3 from this boundary scan device. And then as it is shifted out, we can check if the bit at this position was indeed a 1. Now, if the open fault is there, the input will be floating. And uh, so we will capture a 1, meaning that a 0 will be captured there and the fault may be detected. So our first question is how do we set this output pin to zero? Well since this is a 2 to 4 decoder uh, we will have to check its truth table to find out what is the um, pattern that should be driven to the select inputs in order to uh, make sure that we are selecting 2y2 as the output driven to 0 and the other outputs will in this case be driven to 1. Uh, when we have done so we will be ready to write our test program and uh, it will comprise the commands that you see in this slide. We will start with the uh, usual state reset command just to make sure that we start from the test logic reset state and then our second instruction will uh, have two proposes. One is uh, we want to set these devices in the appropriate modes so we have to set this device to external test mode and this one well, it could be set to external test as well or to sample preload. This one has to be set to external test because we want to drive the test vector to its output, meaning that the uh, boundary scan cells will have to be in controllability mode. Well, so we will set this one to external test and just to um, be able to use another mode we will set this one to sample preload since we will uh, use it only to capture the output responses. This is what we are doing here because 00, zero is the uh, instruction code for external test in this device and 02 is the opcode for sample preload in this device. Now the uh, remaining part of this line tells us that we expect 8181 to come out from the instruction registers. This is the predefined um, pattern that uh, we know will be captured into the instruction registers. And since we know the uh, value of every bit, our mask word will be all one, that is to say FF. If this uh, command is executed without error, then we know that the infrastructure itself has no faults present and we can use it to detect other faults in the circuit. We will then uh, scan through the selected data registers, which actually in this case is the boundary scan register for both devices. We will scan 18 bits, Y18, 
Well, because the boundary scan register in these devices has 18 cells and uh, it is sufficient to shift into this device because this is the one that will be used to drive the test vector setting up the fault detection conditions. So we do not need to drive or shift anything into this device. So let's make it just 18 bits shifted into the scan chain. Uh, the um, test vector will be <clears throat> as shown here and uh, what this does, and I leave it up to you as an exercise to check, what this does is that it sets up the required input pattern at the uh, data select inputs of this device so that the uh, 2Y2 output is set to 0 and the other outputs to 1. This is what is done by this test vector. Uh, once the uh, fault detection conditions have been set, we have to capture the test responses in the second device. And to do so, we will have to shift in another test vector. This will uh, make it possible to go through the capture data register state and to capture the responses in this device. We will have to shift something in again, but uh, what is shifted in, in this case, is just meant to push the responses out, so it has no meaning. Again, it is sufficient to shift 18 bits, because uh, what we want is to shift out the content that has been captured into the boundary scan register of this device, and it has 18 bits, as we know. So shifting 18 bits will be sufficient. It doesn't matter what we shift in because it goes to this device and it is um, no longer needed now. And I leave it again up to you as an exercise. Uh, we expect this pattern to be captured in the boundary scan register of this device. Recall that uh, we have set it to operate in sample preload mode, so the uh, boundary scan cells will be in transparent mode, meaning that um, what is captured at this cell will go through and uh, will be captured at the corresponding output cell as well. So uh, these cells will capture the same logic values in pairs. Uh, if you uh, consider the propagation of the uh, patterns that we have uh, applied to the inputs of this cluster, you will uh, conclude that the expected uh, response is uh, 0D200. Uh, I leave it to you as an exercise as well to modify the uh, argument of the TDO and mask parts of this command in order to check only for this bit. Uh, the response for this case is uh, restricted to the uh, boundary scan cell associated to 2A3, so it should be sufficient to look into this boundary scan cell, meaning that our mask could have a single bit at 1. Now, when we uh, execute the corresponding test program using our uh, remote BST workbench tool, the uh, fault will be flagged, as you see in here, and uh, we will see that uh, the uh, bitstream shifted out does not contain a uh, 1 in this position as expected. Actually, by clicking in the uh, Waveforms tab, we can uh, see that the one that we expected to come out in the fault-free uh, situation, which is, which is shown here, actually is not present if the fault is there. So this is the difference between the fault-free and the faulty situation. Again, I have uh, made a detailed presentation of um, these two diagrams to help you understand um, what is happening. And um, uh, you will see that uh, the um, bit in this position, which is actually 1 plus 8 cells away from TDO, 
should be a um, one, but is actually a zero if the fault is present, and this takes place nine clock cycles away from uh, the end of this bit stream. Now, because, uh, as we said a while ago, this device works in sample preload mode, then um, the uh, value is also captured, the value captured in this cell is also captured in here, so uh, you see it uh, uh, coming out there as well, and this is uh, uh, related to, uh, this, is, this is actually the um, uh, boundary scan cell corresponding to um, this output here and then the uh, uh, position corresponding to the uh, input is uh, placed there but this is the earliest point at which we can detect if the fault is present.